So five from what I've noticed definitely has to be one of the most popular and well-known JRPGs in current year and I feel it's for a pretty understandable reason. It's got a lot of amazing aspects to it like the gameplay and the story but I didn't end up playing this until sometime in 2018 and then I also ended up playing Royal soon after its release or basically about the time it released since you know I had pre ordered but frankly I still enjoyed those two titles but with this video it will mostly be talking about Persona 5 and Royal in general and if there's something I liked or didn't like from Royal, I will be sure to mention it. But regardless, let's actually get into the video and start off with my first like and that has to be the gameplay. While it's not that much different from Persona 3 and 4, I feel it does have the advantage of being a late PS3 game and a mid PS4 game, so it just feels a lot faster in comparison. Does that and just again feels really smooth, and something I did like where you actually do manage to use all the buttons or at least most of them on the controller. While it may not make sense when explaining it, it kinda does help make things feel faster since you're not having to scroll down one main menu for combat. There's also some other nice additions like Holy and Cold Attacks having actual damaging moves along with baton passes and the protagonist being able to swap to more than one persona in a single turn. Trust me, I had to relearn this from Persona 5 because when I went back to play Persona 3 and 4, they didn't have this, so say if I didn't miss input or if I didn't remember what persona had what move, I just kind of messed it up for that turn. But overall, it's still insanely fun to play and I think it's really easy just to get into it just because of, again, of the small quality of life changes Alice made. I also do love the graphics and style of this game because it looks amazing. While it was a PS3 game originally, I've played the PS4 version and frankly that really does look cool and I assume the PS3 version still looks visually fine. And with Royal, that touches up a lot of minor stuff which I like. And I'm a really big fan of stylized and colorful games and again, Persona 5 really hits that nice spot for me. And I want to bet something like Royal would look better on a PS4 Pro or a PS5 since I do believe it got 4K support. I also really like the main cast in this title with the best parts definitely being the all at least to me. I also like seeing them interact with each other at least you know for the most part and with my two favorite characters that being Makoto and Yuji I just felt that those two hit the closest to me and I just again found their awakening scenes just to be really cool. Another aspect of the game that I enjoyed was the palaces because for the most part they're really fun to explore and they all have some really cool and unique stuff to them. And some of them have some really cool puzzles like Kashiro's where you have to get notes to basically figure out passwords for different saves and other stuff like that. I don't think they're all massive brain teasers but I still think there is some thought put into it and frankly I'd rather have stuff like this than whatever Persona 3 and 4 had with their randomized dungeon. I know that Mementos is in the game and it's a vital part to the story but frankly again you do have more of the palaces and I really like that there was at least something like that in the game other than just having one randomized location. And there's a lot that I love about Persona 5 as you can tell. And it's definitely one of my favorite Mega Man titles and definitely one of my favorite PS4 titles. It's such a fun JRPG and I owe it to this title for making me want to go check out the other Megami Tensei titles as you can kind of tell from the other videos on my channel. But even then, this game isn't perfect and one of the things I ended up disliking was that most of the palace owners I felt were lacking in the character aspect. This is mostly because we never got to see much of them in person and only really got to see their shadow version. I only mind their shadow version since it's meant to be their deep thoughts and feelings. I just wish that we got to see more of the lead up into their current versions. While someone like Marawame, we got to see his reason for what he did. I just kind of hope that we got again a build up for his human form instead of just being told that. While it's an interesting story, again, we didn't really get to see it we just got told it. It's kind of the same thing with Akuma and Kanashiro, well, that you're told about them and you really, really get to see them inside the palaces. Akuma was directly related to Haru, so I kind of wanted to see like, you know, him slowly turn into the person he become instead of how he is now, since Haru did mention he wasn't always like this. Kanashiro, I believe you only really get to see him once in the normal world, and if I'm wrong, let me know, but even then, you don't really get to see him a lot in there, so, you know, frankly, it just kind of sucks because I kind of want to understand why he was doing what he was doing. And I believe mostly for him, he actually was really poor. So he started scamming people to get money. But I don't even think this was mentioned at all in the game. But again, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. I kind of do wish Royal fixed this stuff, but sadly it did not. And while I like, well, like say in Kamoshida, again, I still wish that we got to see more of the past instead of just being told it. And for Kamoshida, 
I don't even think you see him all that much in the normal world, which kind of sucks because, you know, you have all this time to actually just interact with him and at least get to know him. And I believe he actually did what he did because he was really poor and he started scamming people for money. But I don't even think you get to see that in game itself. And if I'm wrong, let me know. And I kind of did wish Royal fixed his stuff, but sadly it did not. And well, I liked people like Sei and Kamoshida, I still wish we got to see more of their past. I also found the pacing to kind of slow down a lot after Furutawa's palace and this does include Royal as well. With Akuma's palace, it has the whole stuff with Morgana and Ryuji which I found pretty pointless and again dragged down that arc and the palace did end up taking a long time for like no reason. With the royal version of this palace I found it a little bit more bearable but you know it still was kind of annoying in the end regardless. And with Sei's palace while it was fun I felt it just took way too long especially because you know you also had to like you know get out of the palace for a single day and view a cutscene and I know that was for story reasons again it was just kind of annoying that you had to do that and for Shiro's palace you had to get five different levels all ending in a fight and it actually also mixed in those mouse puzzles and frankly I got bored of that after like the second or third time and I do believe again it was just three times but again just got bored of it and it just dragged on and this next point is actually the same for my Persona 4 video and that's how the characters don't really develop after their arc is done well they might get extra moments in their confidants those are optional so they don't really go towards actually developing their character to me at least. I also felt stuff like Mikado's and Haru's arcs were pretty interesting just got cut off really soon at least after the palaces was done or at least when they got their awakenings. And I kind of do wish that maybe stuff like Mementos could have had extra development for the characters at least I think that would have helped. Just something extra to help me keep being interested in these characters other than just hanging out with them and optional scenes. But overall, I still do love this game quite a bit. And while the issues kinda do bother me, part of me kinda does see how it ended up like this. I feel part of it was just because the development that this game went through kinda took a long time and it got delayed, and at least that's my guess, even though it is kind of a wild one. Even so, for what we did get at Persona 5 and Royal, it's still fun and a lot of stuff I enjoyed. But I wanna hear what you guys liked and disliked about Persona 5 and Royal. Let me know in the comments below. And of course, I'll go over my likes and dislikes. Likes, gameplay, style and graphics, main cast is fun, and unique and fun dungeons. Dislikes, villains lack much backstory, kinda slow pacing in the latter half of the game, and characters stop developing after they're off. Thank you all for watching and see you guys later.